Welcome back. We're doing Huffman coding and we're working through some examples. And so we did one, one nice little, little example and let's, let's do a few more. So let's maybe draw a line here. We'll do a few more. So let's say now that our, our PMF, let's do, let's do a different one. Let's do say a little less space. So this will be example B. P is going to be 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. Oh, and one more, 0 0.1. So we have, this is 5, and these are five, uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, so they add up to 1, and that's, our, that's going to be our P. And now let's do the algorithm. So these are already nice and sorted. And if we take the smallest two, well, there's no unique smallest two. So what do we do? Well, we can just pick any two that are minimal. And so for which their sum is minimal. And so let's just take these two, for example. We add them and we, we, we join them here with a node. And then we get 0.2. And now we need to sort and find the smallest or find two of the smallest again. So here, two of the smallest, we could choose any any two of these three and so maybe let's take let's take these two guys right here we add them and we get 0.2 and now we can take two of the smallest again then that would be either this guy 0.1 and this one or this one and this one or this one and this one so let's pick let's say maybe just to keep things visually simple let's pair it with this guy right here Oh, and that's not 0.2. Now, of course, it's 0.3. Now we sort once again, and so we're sort we're looking among 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0.2. And the 0.2 and 0.2 are smallest, so we combine those. We get 0.4. And now 3 and 3 are smallest. We get 0.6. And then these are joined to make 1. Now let's label these dudes so we get, I always, I always tend to do it in this way, but it's not particularly important. I could go one, one, zero, and then I could switch. I could go zero, one, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but I usually do it this way. Zero, one, zero, one. It's not particularly important what order you do. The important thing is that each of these, you know, branching is, has a different symbol and these are each are code symbols from our code alphabet and so i'm going to do this one as uh also with b equals two so this will also be a binary case later we'll look at how to how to extend huffman to the more general case okay and let's do the same thing let's let's compute let's compute well of course we need to figure out what the code words are so the code word maybe i'll do that yellow since i'm doing yellow numbers here. So the code words, we start out at the root and then for this guy, this point three, the path from the root to him is zero, zero. So his code word is zero, zero. And then point two is zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Point one, this first point one is zero, one, one, zero, one, little zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. And then we have one one zero one one zero and one one one. Very nice. So this is our this is going to be the code words associated with each of these guys. And let's do the same thing. Let's compute the lengths and the expected length. So two, three, 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 three. Lots of threes. And let's take the product of the the lengths times the probabilities, and what do we get? We get 0.6 maybe I'll do a different color lots of different colors so we have 0.6 uh, 0.6 again 0 0.3 0 0.3 0.3 0.3 and 0.3 and if we sum all these up what do we get well we sum them up and we're going to get our expected length which is let's see 0.3 times 5 is one and a half plus 1.2, which gives us 1.7, 2.7 bits, bits since our base is 2, since B is 2. 
And the entropy for this guy is I have pre-computed the base two entropy of this P is 2.6464 bits. So indeed, uh, again, we're, you know, we're not at the entropy because we, we couldn't get integer valued code word lengths that would be reach the ideal code word lengths. But in fact, we're not too far away. We're pretty close. And in, and in fact, we're within one as we ought to be according to our theoretical bounds. Very good. Now, I wanted to do this example to illustrate certain, certain uh, non-uniqueness properties about not only optimal codes in general, but Huffman codes in particular. So in general, a note, a thing to note is that there is never an optimal, there's never a, a not, never an optimal, there's, there's optimal, but there's never a unique optimal symbol code. So note, there is never, maybe I'll say it, uh, uh, let me, how do I say this clearly? Um, no, let's say it this way. No code is uniquely optimal. If there's one optimal code, then there is more than one. And the reason is because, so even like, you know, take this, this example right here. The reason is that, well, this is at, at least as long as B is two, I should say, as long as B is two, because when we have two or more symbols, like in this case, if B, B is two, then we can just flip the zeros and one, just swap zero with one. So just interchange every zero with, a you know, change every zero to a one and every one to a zero in your code words. And you will get a code that clearly has the same lengths and it, uh, you know, it's also prefix and everything. And so it's going to be optimal as well. So, so as long as there is one optimal uh, code, then there is there's at least two. So there is always more than one. And another thing to note, which we will illustrate through this example, is that the set of optimal. So well, let me say say this first. So the Huffman coding procedure, it, it, there may be more than one Huffman code. So for example. Let's do, let's do this same P, but in a slightly different way. So let's just copy and paste this guy. Let's copy that and go down here and paste it. So that was, so, and so thank you for your patience. Okay, so now those okay so now we're all set let's do this same thing again so up here maybe we'll call this b1 and let's do another tree so when we when we when we even when we did our first step we could have done it a different way right we didn't have to choose these two we could have chosen chosen some other two but let's let's maybe just do those two first and and then we'll do something different a little later on so let's do those two, and now you know we can do do these just like before. And now let's see. Now instead of pairing these up, let's pair these guys up. So we can do something slightly different. And this is still a Huffman code because you know one and two, you know point one and point two were were minimal, but also point one and point two were minimal. So so we could just as well have paired it with this guy. And now what happens? So now what do we have? We have 0.2 and 0.2 are minimal, a minimal pair. So let's group those. We got 0.4. And now we have 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0.3. So we, we pair those two. 0.6, and at last, 1. Let's label them. 0, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and assign the code words 0, 0, uh, what's next? 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, and this guy is 0, 1, 1, 0, 
one one zero sorry zero one 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 zero one 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 uh, one one zero and one 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 okay so those are our code words and let's go through the same thing so here we com we looked at the lengths and then we computed the expected length and and if this is a Huffman uh, also a Huffman code then it, hopefully it's going to also give us the let's see so what do we do uh, let me be consistent with my colors here the length two two three four four three three so we're getting different lengths up above we had what did we have two and then all threes and now we have something different we have a couple fours in here and now let's compute our expected length so before we had 2.7 bits so let's see what we get so length times probability 0 0.6 0 0.4 Point three, point four, point four, point three, point three, and when we add them up, what do we get? We get one, one point seven, two point four, two point seven, just like before, two point seven bits. So in fact, you know, it's it's always going to be the same because it's an the, the procedure always gives you an optimal code. We, we're going to prove later that this procedure will always give you an optimal code. So even though there were some some choices that we could make, some different possible ways to come up with a code, any of those ways that you will choose will always give you an optimal code. So this also illustrates another thing to note. So that was our example. That was b2 and we have another thing to note note the lengths of an optimal code are not uniquely determined the lengths of an of optimal code are not unique the set of lengths set of lengths. Well, maybe I should say might not be, let's say, might not be unique. In some cases, they, they could be unique, but they, they need not be unique. Because here we had, of course, like I pointed out, we had different lengths in this case than in this case, and they were both optimal. Okay, so those were a couple more examples. We've done done three examples so far and so I think probably at this point you're you're starting to see the pattern and it's probably clear to you how to generalize this to to the general case um, so we did these were all binary examples so far though and I should show you how to so because it, in the in the case when B is not equal to 2 so these were all B equals 2 when B is not equal to 2 you have to do something slightly different. It's very similar, but there's a slight modification. And so let's talk about that in another video. So we'll do that next.